the boy was playing a game, he was accidentally brought into the game to meet aliens, the boy turned into Super Mario in the game, he was manipulated by women to jump and disappear. What's more interesting, is that the boy was manipulated by his father to die several times, the boy's name is David, this game was introduced to David by his father, David's father's name is Jeff, he just pulled an old game out of storage, the game is called Strange Wednesday, Jeff opened the game, and he was excited to share the experience with his son. The operation of the game is very simple. It's avoiding obstacles in the road. He can't pass the level if he successfully passes through the town. But in the past 30 years, no one has passed the customs. The game has just begun. Jeff tripped over a toaster. David thought the game was very interesting and began to play it. In this way, Jeff successfully narrowed the distance between him and his son. David has two good friends. It's Scott and his ex-girlfriend Lena. David couldn't wait to share the game with his friends. The next morning Scott and Lena arrived at David's house. When David and the others were playing games, David managed to skip the toaster. He was cut on the head repeatedly by a mailbox again. Jeff says he has a trick he can't use to get past that, but David had no interest in his father's gaming experience. The three young men were having a good time. David made his lonely old father look like an outsider. One day, David surpassed his father's score. He cried out in excitement. Jeff excitedly grabbed the handle and wanted to play with his son. But David said he wanted to rest. This made Jeff feel very disappointed. This day, Lena excitedly showed off her treasure from the platform. It's a weird Wednesday game and cassette. The game is said to be cursed. This game killed a lot of kids, so the game is very cheap. The game comes with a cheat code on the box. David was dismissive. He felt that it would be dishonorable to win using a cheat code. The three of them played at Lena's house all night. Scott has the worst record, so he used the cheat code when they weren't looking. After school the next day, they open the game again and find a new character in the mirror. He's wearing a ho o dan glasses just like Scott. David and Lena start using this game character. Scott was killed by a squirrel and electrocuted by a jumping wire. He had only one life left at the end, and then he got hit by an ice cream truck. What's weird is they haven't been able to reach Scott all day. The game screen turned a bloody red. They set out to look for Scott, only to find a police cordon not far away. It turns out that Scott really did get mashed by an ice cream truck, just like in the game. But neither of them saw it. They went home and continued playing the game. After down scenes of failures, David couldn't resist using the cheat code on the box. The moment the cheat code was successfully entered by David, David suddenly stood in place with his body out of control. David will jump when Lena controls the controller once. Turns out he became a character in the game. Lena tried to shut down the game. Just then David walked out. It turns out that his father, Jeff, is controlling the game on the secondary machine. David dodged the flying bran and gas canisters, just like the characters in the game. He ended up dying under a lawn mower. After his death, David returned to Lena's house. It turns out that the so-called cheat code is a cursed reminder code. When the lives in the game run out, David dies with them. He dodged the down sign to reach the jumping power line. Everything is just like in the game. Finally, he was hit on the head with a stone. Who the hell is manipulating David? Lena called David's father first, but Jeff is so absorbed in the game that he can't hear the phone ringing. Lena can only write to David's house. Then David was suffocated by a plastic bag and stabbed by a flying knife. David now has only one life left to live. Jeff still doesn't know what happened to his son. Finally, Jeff crosses town to meet the ultimate villain. At the same time, the real David also came to a jungle. In front of him was a magnificent alien ship. The villain is an alien. The alien raised his hand and fired to rocks at David, which Jeff easily dodged. The father kept dodging the attack with the handle. Lena finally arrived at David's house. She kept knocking on the door and Jeff had to stop the game. He heard that he was playing with his son's life. The father was shocked. In order to save his son, Jeff decides to get into the game and fight alongside his son. The moment Jeff entered the game, David was finally free. Now father and son are in dual mode. The father and son evaded the attack while picking up stones and throwing them at the spacecraft. But the aliens were not harmed. Father was trapped by his laser. Just then David saw a flashing red button on the ship. So that's the secret to clearing the customs. He went around behind the alien as fast as he could and pressed the button. At that moment, the alien crouched down in pain. Its ship suddenly disintegrated. 
Father and son become race-winning champions for 30 years. At the end of the story, they bury the cursed game. The father reflected on himself. David grew up, though, the best parent-child relationship is knowing how to exit at the right time. Jeff asked David to take his driver's license test. He bought David a new car. He also encouraged his son to chase Lena back. Just after the father and son left, the game that had been buried was moving. Maybe the killing game isn't over yet. Let's look at the second story. A beautiful woman sleeps in a coffin. What makes her different is that she has blood on her lips. At this time, a man with a hammer smashed a sharp wooden stake into her chest. All the blood from the woman's body is flowing out. Soon blood was spilling from the coffin. Women are vampires. It's the only way she'll die. This scene is very scary. Richard is awakened by a nightmare. His wife was still asleep in his arms. Actually, they're vampires sleeping in coffins. It's daytime. They cannot be exposed to sunlight. But his daughter is still in the coffin, not sleeping. Richard tapped the coffin twice to remind his daughter to rest. All three of them live in a truck. Richard's new neighbor's name is Doug. He wasn't very welcoming of the Richard family. Late at night, Richard is mending the fence. Doug came up and said hello, in a very unfriendly way. You vampires should follow our rules when you move into a human community, or I will expose your whole family to the sun. Richard was still kind enough to respond. Doug has a young son, Alex. Alex has a crush on Richard's daughter Anna. Doug returned to the house angrily. He also replaced the welcome plaque in front of the door with a cross and garlic. Even so, Richard still fancied that the neighbors would like them sooner or later. Anna didn't like the city, because they're discriminated against here. What's worse is that someone hurt Anna with a cross. She wondered why her father was so eager for humanity to accept them. Alex, the neighbor, is a master of staying up late. He's usually lonely. He was always peeping through the window at Anna across from him. Late at night, he happened to see Anna moonbathing on the roof in a bikini. Anna plays a video of the sunrise on her phone. She longed for the feeling of being surrounded by the sun. Alex is smitten with Anna. He quietly took out his mobile phone and took a photo. But Anna's muscles at her feet and the photo like a horrible mummified corpse. Alex screamed in fear. The noise disturbed Anna. Anna jumped off the roof in a backflip. Alex hurried out to check, but he only saw Anna's bikini on the ground. As soon as Alex shined the flashlight behind him, he was frightened by the naked Anna and screamed. Alex was too shy to look the girl in the eye. Two young men introduced themselves. Alex summoned up courage and offered to take Anna for a walk. Anna tells Alex that humans have a big misunderstanding about them. Today's vampires no longer drink human blood. Alex brought Anna to the playground in the park. He and his mom used to play here when they were kids, but his mother died suddenly when he was seven. He envied Anna very much because Anna's parents were immortal. The relationship between two equally lonely young people is progressing quickly. Anna would often take Alex back to the coffin for the night. Anna's parents are worried, because no matter how hard they try, humans don't really accept vampires. Alex wants Anna to turn herself into a vampire. He prefers Anna's family atmosphere. Anna refused outright, because vampires are hunted and persecuted wherever they go. It's a change Alex can't afford. Doug soon learns of his son's love affair. He cursed his son bitterly, a noble human falling in love with a monster. The father never told the son exactly how his mother died. It turns out Alex was seven. His mother was bitten to death by a vampire. On the night when my mother was buried, she suddenly crawled out of the graveyard. Doug realizes that his wife has become a vampire, so he drove a stake through her heart. Alex was shocked that you killed my mother. My father said he had to do it. He then handed his son a box. Inside the box is also a stake. He is trying to get his son to kill his lover. Dick knew his son couldn't do it, so he quietly reached out to his old friends. Doug hung up the phone and opened the cabinet. He pulled out his long-married weapon. Turns out he was a vampire hunter. Hunting vampires is his hobby. One night, Alex met Anna in the park. Alex told Anna, his father has gathered a band of hunters. Anna's family must move out as soon as possible. At this very moment, Doug's already here with his men. Turns out Doug secretly installed GPS software on his son's phone. Alex wants to protect his lover, but these hunters showed no mercy and directly beat Alex into serious injuries. Instead of blaming his partner, Doug blames Anna for all this. Doug aimed directly at Anna's heart. Anna suddenly flew up and looked coldly at the poor bloodthirsty people. Anna then revealed her true colors. Blood and pieces of flesh flew everywhere that night. Anna soon killed all the hunters. 
Turns out Doug underestimated vampires all these years. Vampires are never afraid of crosses. If it weren't for their tolerance of humans, humans would have been killed long ago. Anna only bit Doug for Alex's sake. The sun has risen. Alex told Anna to hurry back, but he was badly wounded. If we don't get treatment, we'll die soon. Finally, Anna made a difficult decision. She carried Alex, who was badly injured, to the hospital. The hot sun made every step of her walk very difficult. Eventually, covered in blood, Anna managed to deliver her lover to the doctor. Alex was saved. Anna slowly rots in the sun and dissolves into miasma. The real sun turned out to be even more beautiful than she had imagined. I don't know how long it took Doug to wake up from the darkness. He moved to a difficulty. Turns out he was locked in a coffin by Richard and his family. He still wants to kill the whole vampire family. As he spoke, he felt something strange in his mouth. Turns out he turned into a vampire too. My son Alex came over. Doug was so happy. He begged his son to release him. The next moment, Alex picked up the stake and brutally struck his father's heart. Doug was gradually drowned in blood. That's all for today's story. See you next time.